talk about a lot right now is comprehensive internationalization. And it's a, it's a concept by um, John Hudzik. And so that means that internationalization needs to be, you know, throughout the organization, it needs to be in all the activities, it needs to be in the values, it needs to be in the management and all the activities that trickle down. Um, so so it, it affects everything. So before when you would have kind of, you would have an international office at the higher education institution and they would do mobility. And then you would say, well, research in itself is international. It doesn't actually have to be. You could do very local research if you wanted to, but sure, a lot of research, if you want to have it peer reviewed and so on would be international because that's, you know, where you get the kind of confirmation and the status. But these two with, you know, this, this was, it was mobility and it was research. And now it's being understood as I explained in the beginning that, you know, you need to provide all students with it. Um, there's also a discussion now where I think that obviously we need to provide the teachers and, and the staff at the universities with the competence to internationalize the curriculum, because if they don't know how to do it, then, then it won't be in the system. So it, it really kind of does um, affect all of, of these, um, the whole idea of how education is being done. And you can see that in Finland, for example, when you have the National Agency for Education having jurisdiction um, on, on primary education all the way up to secondary level. And they redid recently the whole uh, curriculum for the upper secondary level. And there you will see that there's a lot more now uh, talk about internationalization. There's a lot more talk about soft skills. And there's also talk about bridging the gap towards higher education. On the other hand, they don't have jurisdiction in that sense on higher education in Finland. But then you have these national policies and they also have recommendations and they have a department at the agency for recommendations for internationalization of higher education. So in a sense, they are connected. Uh, and in Finland, for example, then you have the funding so, so you have government funding for almost all higher education institutions in Finland, and that obviously guides us. So, you know, we have to go where the money is. So if they say you should internationalize and here's money for it, then, you know, that's where we'll go. If they say internationalization is not important, then, then most universities wouldn't, you know, put that much effort into it, unless they felt that it's really important in itself anyways. Uh, so that's one way to kind of steer where we're going. And the national policies in Finland for both higher education and for other things um, are very much now including internationalization efforts because we are a remote country. The climate is what it is. Um, we have a population uh, that is shrinking and we really, really need more workforce. Uh, we need more, you know, for innovation and creativity, you need as many different aspects as possible. So you would need also um, other kinds of people and not people have gone through the exact same educational system and kind of the same culture and all think more or less in the same way. So we need that diversity also. Uh, and, and because of that, you have then these, these, these national incentives. And so the Ministry of Education and Culture and the Ministry of um, Economics and Employment uh, are very much now working together in Finland to, to kind of create these um, positive settings. So we're talking about place branding for Finland. We're talking about place branding for the different regions. We're talking about, you know, Helsinki maybe especially because it's just biggest and most visible. Um, there's also a focus on the Nordics because we're thinking, hey, if Finland isn't interesting enough because few people in, in some places of the earth even know Finland exists, then, then how could you sell Finland? But maybe you could sell the Nordics because the Nordics is kind of a brand already in a sense. Uh, then you have, of course, the, the language issues, but, but Parakata, for example, it's quite interesting as we are a Swedish speaking university. So we're a university of, of Kind of for a minority uh, and then we have a lot of minorities within that minority and then we have a strong connection to the nordics and what could we do with that so it's actually a very interesting point in time right now to think about all these things um, but the nordic countries are all kind of struggling with the very similar issues so there's a lot of cooperation there um, as you said with all there's you know the regions uh, needing to retain the talent so usually you would have regions where you have higher education institutions uh, that's where people kind of cluster. Uh, that's where uh, companies would place their uh, headquarters or, or their subsidiaries. And, and then you have small ec ecosystems kind of growing around those um, institutions. And we've been thinking about uh, decreasing the amount of institutions. So there's always this kind of push and pull effect. Where do you have enough people to, to kind of create a higher education institution? Where is it needed? On the other hand, it's quite expensive to have a lot of higher education institutions. So it would be smart in a sense to have fewer but then people would have to travel, they would not stay in the region. So there's always this, this you kind of, you have to weigh one against the other. And I'm also involved in this Erasmus Plus project where, where we're looking at um, 
different minor regions in, in, in other European countries, and they have the exact same uh, struggle that OHO does. They are not capital regions. How do they retain the international talent that their companies really need? Uh, because it's not so sexy to live in, in, a, in a regional city or, or a community compared to um, a capital, especially in a small country where, you know, if you come from New York, you would not find Helsinki big enough <laughs> or interesting enough, maybe. So even Helsinki in, in a world scale is quite small. And, you know, so you might want to go to Stockholm or, or, or another country and another capital instead. So even the capital in Finland is not, you know, as, as cool as, as many might think. On the other hand, we have the Nordic welfare system. We have work-life balance and, and stuff like that. Clean air, clean water. There's a lot of drivers as well. So what they're trying to do is, is they have this um, talent boost program in Finland, which is a national program for um, increasing the attraction, the retention um, uh, of international talents in Finland because we need them. So they're trying different things. They're, they're trying, you know, um, offering subsidiaries for um, subsidizing uh, for companies. They are driving these campaigns of this is, you know, uh, how great it is to employ uh, an international talent. You will have ecosystems where regions have really tapped into the fact that they have higher education institutions. It might be usually uh, a, a research university, a university of applied sciences, companies and the city working together. And so you have these different talent boost hubs. Uh, you would have them, you have them in the capital region, you have them in different regions. You have uh, the SIMHE project, which is supporting immigrants in higher education, where some higher education institutions have received a status and funding from the ministry to support immigrants in validating their, their previous competencies and, and degrees, and then supporting them in, in trying to um, guide them in what options they have for further education or for work. Um, you have what is called the Kuntakokeilo in Finland, where you kind of have the municipalities taking over the employment office uh, jobs or the, the, the tasks that they have had. So when it previously was just the employment offices, now it's the municipalities that, that kind of take care of those issues so that they could increase the cooperation between different entities. So you would have uh, employment, you would have immigration, you would have integration, you would have uh, educational issues. You have places like International House Helsinki to, to help with all matters in, in one place because obviously a lot of people who are moving somewhere for work or for studies are not coming alone. Uh, they have families or, or want to create families and they need to find, you know, places for their kids. They need somewhere to live. They need to find out about healthcare. They need language instruction and so on. So, so it's all, again, a very complex whole. You don't just go somewhere and take a degree and leave. You, you, you are there. You're living there. Your, your well-being is connected to it. Your networking is connected to it. Um, and obviously for those countries and regions that want to keep and retain international talent, you really need to offer them more than just, hey, this is a degree uh, for free or not for free, and then bye-bye. So there's a lot of different forces right now uh, working on these issues and, and a lot of different projects. And as you'll see, there are, um, there are a lot of kind of these um, individuals who have started smaller initiatives that have been growing. So some of them have been funded by, by a talent boost and might be by an organization, but there's a lot, I think, of this kind of grassroots activity now in Finland also, where groups are just growing massively. You have International Working Women of Finland on Facebook that went you know, from zero to 4,000 members quite quickly. Uh, and there's obviously a need. And then they started another one for, for men, <laughs> because in some, in some issues, it does make sense to, to kind of separate the genders. Uh, although I generally feel that that gender shouldn't matter that much, but in, in certain cultures, in certain issues, there might be this ease of, of opening up and asking for help and being vulnerable for, for certain specific issues, that is easier if, if you, it's a kind of a, a gender-based um, group in that sense. But then you have, you have a new group for, for HR managers called Nordic Diversify, because they want to work for diversifying workforce. And in many companies, management might not even have realized yet how important that is or might not be on board. But HR managers are really seeing now, they are usually the ones who have the time to go to different workshops, who are reading up on things and are like, hey, diversity and inclusion is a really cool thing. It's something we need, it's good for business, but then we need to change our recruitment procedures because right now they're not working for that. And so they're now starting their own group. And when you had these um, HR rewards uh, 
previously that had only been marketed in, in Finnish and it would only be Finnish people who would get those rewards. And then there was activity on LinkedIn and it was said, hey, this is not okay. You know, there's a lot of international recruit recruiters and uh, recruitment projects and so on. And so they said, hey, you're right, let's change that. And so, you know, in, in basically 24 hours, they created a whole English website for that. And you were allowed to then enter stuff only in English as well, if you wanted to. And, and so there's, there's, it's not only kind of always somebody who's evil and saying, we don't want you. There's a lot of just pure, I did not think about it. You know, they, they, you, you've been doing the same thing the same way for so long, you, you didn't realize, or you don't know that there's a demand. You didn't know that they wanted to participate in your competition or wanted this and that. So, so there's, there's always also kind of this need for understanding both ways, where it's not always kind of, hey, we don't want you. It might be ignorance and, and where, you know, we haven't gotten with the program yet that there are so many internationals here and that there are nice people and it's good for us, um, but, but bear with us and help us and support us uh, in, in being able to open those doors. And, and, and well, opening doors takes me obviously to, to my own initiative on, on opening doors and minds for uh, international talents in Finland. which completely started from the fact that in the spring of 2020, I was so annoyed with the fact that um, universities and, and universities of applied science had trouble uh, getting internships for our students, uh, for international students in companies in Finland. So, okay, in Finland, you want to retain international talent. Companies need specified talent and so on, but they're not always ready to do that. And so um, because of the funding, for example, for universities, we need to graduate our students to, to receive funding. We cannot graduate students without them having um, completed their internships. Finland would like them to complete their internships and stay in Finland. They would like to complete their internships and stay in Finland. But unless we can get the Finnish companies or the companies in Finland to give them internships, then what are we supposed to do? So we have students going back to their home countries to do their internships because nobody will employ them here. Well, now with COVID, it's, it's even harder. Um, but basically still, it is in the interest of the universities and of the government and the society and of the country to have internships and employment for international talents in Finland. But none of us can do anything about it because it is the companies that employ them. Mm -hmm. So I realized that we need to get the companies on board. Internships in general are tough because, you know, the students don't know enough yet to just be able to contribute to whatever the company is doing. But it takes resources to guide them and, and to, to direct them and so on. And then the whole foreign thing just feels very strange and, and, and foreign and as an extra uh, workload in a, in a sense. And then I thought, well, we have all these things going on. There's, you know, new migration rules and, and, and there's all these ecosystems and there's the talent boost program and there's the same thing and oh, you know, but there's still no one entity and, and you have people doing great things, but, but there's really no system for it. And then I thought, well, I have about 40 people just in my network who I know are working on these things and are eager about you know, fixing it, but there's no connection. And so then I found people and I found a platform uh, and a facilitator. And so we created this community for everybody in Finland who is interested in or working on these issues. So we started inviting all those people that we knew in our networks from, you know, from ministries uh, and, and decision makers to researchers, to psychologists, to international talents, to uh, employers to you know educational institutions to city representatives to um, employment office representatives to healthcare representatives you know absolutely anybody who were interested in and connected to this topic and so um, then well that was in the spring of 2020 and we just wanted to try out you know, could you do this because I wanted to bring everybody in Finland into the same place and that just seemed crazy but COVID helped me in that sense because you know everybody had been online anyways. And before that, probably people would have said, you know, no, we have to travel, we have to conference, you know, we have to meet each other, you can't cooperate just online. But now that nobody could travel anywhere, everybody had to be online, and they were already online. So just saying, hey, you know, come to this place, then, then that was kind of easy. The difficulty is getting, you know, hundreds of people working together in one space, and that's why we have a professional facilitator. Um, but she was, you know, we were all volunteering our time for this. So we realized that if we want to do this properly, we really need more time allocated and we need resources. And so we got some funding from Business Finland. So now for a year uh, from September, 2020, um, basically until next year, um, or was it, no, it's actually from October, 2020 to September, 21, we have a small 
of funding for the house-based community platform and for the facilitator. And so in the spring we had, we asked all those people from all these different perspectives. And that was the whole point, getting as broad a perspective as, as possible. So we, in Finland, we love statistics. We have statistics for absolutely everything. Um, and we do a lot of research on that, but we don't have the kind of the qualitative data with experiential data. So what we wanted to do is to bring those international talents uh, together with the employers and the decision makers into one platform where they can see who else is there and they can ping each other. So as an international talent, you can, you can ping a ministry uh, representative if you want and say, hey, how would you respond to this or that? At the same time, the ministry representative could look at the, the platform or the house base um, and see exactly what the international talents want to tell them. So as an international talent, you can just break down anything you want there. And we can then aggregate that information with AI. So doing all of these things, we kind of um, ask people, what are the main you know, challenges? What is it we should focus on? What is the problem? How do we fix it? And we made a, a report on that and sent it to, to all the members and also to other decision makers. And then when we received the funding, we decided to dig deeper into these things because many of these things was you know, more or less a list of what people really who are working on this and, and experiencing it are feeling that this is what we need to do. And now we're going in deeper. So every month we have workshops open to anybody where we can dig deeper into these uh, issues and then we can create reports because you will always have kind of top management and decision makers won't have time to be on an online platform. But the international talents who are most active, they can be there and they can give that data into that uh, platform and then we can compile that data and send it to the decision makers. So what we're trying to do is, is get the decision makers to get their hands on and kind of really see and feel and understand the international talents and, and what they're going through. And at the same time, make those international talents um, visible and make them feel that they get their voice heard and that they can say whatever they want. And this will then be you know, going forward either there or in reports to the decision makers so that they make the right decisions. Because still in Finland, um, although you have a lot of activity now by international talents and for international talents, still if you look at the list of people at the decision making tables, they're not very international. So we kind of need the, the representation to change. We need to have more international talents actually affecting decision makings. Uh, because right now we're kind of opening up to, to hearing them and to seeing them and to remembering them. But now we also need to get them into the decision making spaces. So I think that we need to, in that sense, get organized where, where we don't you know, offer too much of the same thing um, individually, separately, and, and that we need to be able to communicate, to stay in touch, to keep updated and kind of say, well, okay, if you focus on that segment, I focus on this segment, and then we can you know, solve the whole problem in a sense. Um, and I guess that goes for grassroots, it goes for, for companies, it goes for governments and, and, and regions and so on. So I think that really, it sounds cliche, but I think that that cooperation definitely is key. And again, always, always include uh, the target group because it happens uh, at government level, it happens at university level that you're kind of like, hmm, what might they need? And then you create services for somebody else instead of creating them with somebody who actually will be needing those um, services. And I think this is, a, this is a global problem. This happens all the time. Um, but I think we're waking up to, to the reality that, whoa, okay, no, we need representation. We need to include them in the development phase so that it is the right things we do in the right way. And it's interesting because it has been criticized also that a lot of these national programs for Finland have been, you know, going abroad, um, trying to gain a specific, well, especially ICT talent, and you're kind of pinpointing, you know, and you're bringing in new international talent and that for seven years, like, hello, we're already here. Why are you trying to attract more people to move to Finland when you're not using the pool that you have already? And so talk about this, this local talent, international talent pool is being talked about a lot more. And with the Punta Kokeilu, there will also be, and the same head, will be able to, to create these validation systems. And as I said, we're just starting with that. So so there are, for some fields, there are validation procedures, but there's also this cultural thing, I think, in the background where, you know, Finnish higher education has always been, you know, or education overall, it's so, it's world class and, you know, there's no better education and high quality education than in Finland. And there's a suspicion. So when you, you know, you have a, a, a certificate from Ghana, we're like, hmm, could that possibly be as good as our own? 
So I think there's this, this suspicion towards the quality in, in other countries and in other educational systems where like, hmm, we're not sure that that's enough. And so I think the whole validation attitude will have to change. Uh, and I think we will have to kind of emotionally and intellectually as individuals have to realize that it doesn't have to be the same. You can't expect the, 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 you know, the educational system in Bangladesh to be identical to the one in Finland. It will be different, but maybe there are aspects that we have not thought about. So what we count as quality and, and, and necessary for something then maybe they have additional things that we haven't been counting so far that we might be able to count and that they would bring something very specific to, to our culture and to our society in terms of knowledge, uh, ways of thinking, um, skills that we, we really need, that we did not know that we needed. It's again, it's the open-mindedness towards the fact that we might not do it the best way. And there might be other ways that we have never ever thought about. Um, but validation is really being talked about now because of the same and, and developing these uh, models for it, and also at the, the employment offices, how to direct people into, to be, again, making better use of them in the sense that they have skills and competencies and knowledge and networks, but we're not tapping into them because we're placing them in something else because, or not placing them at all. But then really finding out this individual path, talking to the individual, asking them, you know, what is it you want? What is it you can do? What could you bring? And then trying to support them in finding those ways because it's hard and it's hard to get into the networks. And so, um, and this I said to many of the internationals that I meet, because so many of them have been here for a long while, and they're 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 so they're so kind of they're sad, they they're fed up, they're disillusioned, they're like, no, you know, nothing's ever happening. And what I keep telling them is that change is coming. I swear, because I mean, I've been at this for for many years, and there's a huge change just within the last three years. And you know, many were sad that there were tuition fees in 2017 uh, for non-EU citizens. And, and I, can, I can agree with that because many came here because they couldn't afford higher education degrees in other countries and Finland would give them out for free. And sure, that's a really good reason to come. Uh, that was then again criticized because why spend, you know, finish taxpayer money if the people are then moving home. Then it turned out that they don't want to move back home. They want to stay in Finland. They want to contribute. They want to pay taxes here. And that's like, okay. But what it did was that it, it started this whole customer thinking. It started to talk about them as customers customer journeys, what else do we need to attract them? And that came, you know, I, I, I did a, a research on the Finnish population, uh, kind of the, the, the pyramid, you know, when, when, with the shrinking um, population almost 20 years ago. And now we're like, oh, but the population is shrinking. <laughs> it's not new, but it's only now that we're actually really acting on it. And so you have these two forces where you have kind of like, oh, oh, they're customers and oh, we actually need them. And this creates, the, the drive and, and the demand for services. So I completely agree. There, there has been a neglect of the international talents and we'll be like, ah, okay, we're doing this because we probably should, and then we leave it. But now there really are forces that are driving, they're putting money into it, they're putting policies into it. Um, and, and we're really talking about how to make the best use of and how to integrate them the best and how they can, the international talents can can bring their best and how they can feel included and, and be represented. So the discussion is definitely changing. There's a lot more energy going into this. There's more money going into it. There's more time and resources going into it. And, and I do feel that change uh, really is coming. So, you know, bear with us. 